to this particular passage of Scripture. But Ephesians chapter number 6, and we're reading the words of the Apostle Paul, and I am beginning in verse number 10. Amen. Verse number 10 of Ephesians chapter number 6. If you have it, say amen. amen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts and wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you can stand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, verse 14 said, Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16 being our focal point on this particular Sunday morning where Paul the Apostle tells you and I to above all take the shield of faith wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And we will stop right there. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Above all, take the shield of faith, wherewith you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Do you think some people have more faith than others? Careful how you answer that. Be careful when your pastor asks you a question. Maybe I should say that. Is there some people that when you look at them, they achieve so much greater than what many other people achieve and our automatic reaction is well he's just got more faith than I do she's just got more faith than I do and sometimes that can be a cop-out for why we're not achieving more in the kingdom of God as if to say God favors them over me let me tell you the Bible said God hath given to every man the measure of faith which means, my friend, you have the faith that is needed for you to achieve great things for the kingdom of God. How many believe that? I'm excited to talk to you about this today. I believe it's the most crucial part of the armament of the believer. And because it is the most crucial part of our armament, it is also the part that is most attacked by the enemy. And you see, the enemy is out to get your faith today. Because he knows that if he can get your faith, he can get to you. And as we begin to uncover this passage, and I'm going to dig right in because I've got a lot to say today and I want to get you out of here in a timely fashion. But as I dig right in, I am interested to note that Paul the Apostle, as you look at our text, uses the words above all to introduce this concept of the shield of faith. And on the surface, one would look at that and say, well, he must mean that faith is the most important piece of armament that we have. Faith is better than truth, or faith is more important than salvation, or faith is more important than the other pieces that God has given to us. But be careful before you say that, because that is not necessarily what Paul is talking about. And as I told you last Sunday, the most important thing that you and I need to understand when we interpret Scripture is to keep it in context and to make sure that we're not taking the Bible out of context. And so to really understand what Paul is talking about, I want you to see what these shields of Paul's day really looked like. Actually, there were two different types of shields that soldiers used. One was the round circular shield, which was much smaller in size, much like you see this handsome gentleman on the screen holding. It was this small shield that would be placed on the forearm of the soldier. And as he went into battle, he would have this shield in front of him that he could move quickly. He could maneuver through the battlefield and this shield would be in front of him and he could block when he was fighting the enemy. He could fight with one hand and block with the other hand. But you see, remember, what is the first word of verse number 14 as Paul introduces this passage? He's not talking about going into battle, but the first word is, he says, stand. Everybody shout the word stand. Yeah. 
In other words, it is not an offensive passage of Scripture, but rather it is a defensive one that when the enemy is assaulting you, you are to stand in the midst of the battle. And so consequently, the other type of shield is what I believe Paul was talking about because the other type of shield is much larger in size. And it is not a shield that you attach to your arm that you move from side to side with, but rather it looked much like this. It was a very large shield that literally could be planted into the ground. And the soldier could literally hide behind this shield. It was so large. In fact, it was so large that many times they not only called it a shield, but they also called it a door. And so this soldier, in the midst of the assault of the enemy, could literally hide his entire body behind this shield or behind this door. And so when Paul says, above all, again, he's not placing the shield as a priority above everything else, but rather he is, that, that, that translates into this word, above all means in front of all, or before all. So what Paul is saying is put the shield in front of you so that you can hide behind the shield. Make sure that it is before you so that when the enemy assaults you, you've got something behind which you can hide and be protected from the fiery darts of the enemy. And so Paul, as he begins to look at this, go back to that picture. As he begins to look at this shield that the soldier is using, he asks the Holy Spirit, what is it now that I can tell the believers? What is it that I can write that is the shield behind which they can hide when the enemy assaults them? And I believe the Holy Spirit inspired Paul to say that the thing behind which my people need to hide is the faith that I have given to them because you see my friend when the devil is assaulting you the only thing that is going to protect you is the faith that you have in who the Lord Jesus Christ is amen there are some of you here today that presently are under the assault and the attack of the enemy how many know what I'm talking about amen the devil you are right now at this moment there are issues in your life that the devil is launching an all out assault on onto you and onto your family, onto very areas of your life. And I want to give you good news. The very fact that you are being attacked by the enemy, amen, reveals the fact that you are a valuable asset to the kingdom of God. Amen. If you were not a valuable asset, the devil would not be attacking you and the devil would not be trying to destroy you. But you see, the enemy sees that you've got value to the kingdom of heaven and he's going to use everything and everybody that he can to devalue what you can bring to the kingdom and so when you're under attack it is sign my friend that the devil's put a target on you and you ought to thank God because God has entrusted you enough amen to endure the attack of the enemy and by the grace of God you're going to overcome because you've got faith in what God has said somebody shout amen Above all, take the shield of faith. You see, when the enemy assaults you, what he tries to do is he tries to make you feel as if you are defenseless. He tries to make you feel as if you are vulnerable. Have you ever had those days when absolutely everything seems to fall apart and you're wondering, saying, God, I don't even have the strength to put one foot in front of the other and you just want to go and just hide your yourself away because you don't even know how you're going to make it to the next hour. Who's with me on that? Come on, somebody raise your hand. Amen. The devil wants you to feel so weak and so vulnerable. And when you get in that moment, what happens is then you begin to become fearful. You become fearful about even going to the mailbox because you're afraid of what bill might be in the mailbox. How many have hesitated before you open the mailbox? I don't want to see what's in there. I don't want to see that my electric is about to be shut off. I don't want to see the creditor has given me a third and a final notice. Amen. Some of you are afraid to go into work because you're afraid that you're going to be downsized or that you're going to lose your job. And so therefore you go in with fear, intimidation, and intrepidation. Some of you are afraid to go home at night. 
You're afraid to go home at night because you're afraid again that you're going to be in another argument with your spouse and you're sick and tired of arguing. And so instead, when you go home, you circle the block about five times to get the courage to finally walk in the front door. You are so af- The devil is having a heyday with you right now. Let me, I'm just going to tell you what's on my heart today. The devil is having a heyday with you right now because he has got you so convinced that you're going to get bad news. The doctor's report, you are afraid to read it because you're afraid that it's going to be cancer. You're afraid that it's going to be some fatal disease. And I'm going to tell you right now, you're in the right place because God said it is time for that fear to be eradicated by faith because the only thing that is going to break the tactic of intimidation is faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that is why Paul the Apostle said above all in front of you needs to be what this element of faith is. How many today are ready to step into the realm of faith? Let me hear you shout amen. I'm sick and tired of living in fear, sick and tired of living in intimidation I no more will I ever be fearful of what the devil says to me because I I believe that faith stands in front of me and I'm hiding behind the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm going to give you three things today. I'm going to give you the definition of faith. I'm going to give you secondly the defense of faith. And thirdly, I'm going to give you the decisions of faith. Now these notes are always on our church app on Monday. You can take notes, but they're always going to be printed out for you as well. But I want you to first of all notice with me the definition of faith. What is faith? Is it some emotion? Is it some feeling? Is it something that we work up with some emotional outburst? Is it some song and dance that we do? You know, I've been in some churches where there's a lot of emotion, but there's very little faith. I said there's a lot of emotion, but very little faith. In fact, I heard one preacher say, and I won't tell you who he is, but he made a great statement. He said, if I'm preaching at a church and I walk in and there's a whole lot of shouting going on and a whole lot of dancing, he said, I know there ain't going to be a whole lot of giving. Because you see, sometimes it is the most, I mean, faith has nothing to do with how you feel. Faith has nothing to do with your emotions. And see, what we've done is we have allowed faith to become something that is defined about how high that we jump. And I'm a, and brother, I, I believe in shouting and I believe in emotionalism. But brother, when your feet hit the ground, there better be faith that sustains you. When things get tough, it's not going to be the shout on Sunday morning that's going to sustain you. But it's going to be the faith that you have, amen, that's going to, in the midnight hour, get you through that time of crisis. We've got to understand what faith is. Now, remember. Remember, faith is like a shield. Faith is like a door. That's what Paul said. He said, above all, in front of you, put the shield, put the door. Now, what's interesting to me is to go back to the Word of God in Genesis 15 and see what the Lord told to Abraham. Look at this. The Bible said, fear not, Abram, for I am thy shield. I am thy exceeding and great reward. The psalmist said, look at this in Psalm 18 and verse 2. He said, the Lord is my rock. He is my fortress. He is my deliverer, my God, my strength, in whom I will trust. He said, he is my what? Say it together. He is my my shield. Amen. Jesus said in John chapter 10 and verse number 7, he said, Verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. And so when I look at the word of God, what he shows me is that he is my shield and he is my door, which says that the, if the Lord is my shield and the Lord is my door, and Paul said, Take unto you the shield of faith, is it not to reason that faith is not something that I work up by a high level of emotion, but rather faith is simply trusting that the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, has already done everything that needs to be done to sustain me and to give me the victory in this life. Listen, faith is simply going back to the cross and saying, Jesus, you have already won the victory for me, and so I'm not going to worry about where my next paycheck is going to come from simply because I know you have already won the victory, and I 
am trusting in the finished work of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many know what I'm talking about? Say amen. I told you last Sunday, I think we've overcomplicated the gospel. We've made the gospel into something God never intended for it to be. We've made the gospel into taking seven classes, put a little dab of oil on your head, going through baptism, and then you're saved. No, Jesus said, all you've got to do is believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. But the same is true with faith. I think we've made faith into something that, is God, that God never intended for it to be. We've made faith into, a, into, a, into a, a, an emotional demonstration. And we think that the louder we are, the more faith we have. No, faith simply steps back and says, Jesus, no matter what I'm going through right now, I believe that you have already provided everything that I need. And so consequently, I am saying, Lord, I am fully trusting that no matter what anybody says or does, that you have already provided for me. That's what faith is. Faith doesn't require you to do anything else but believe Jesus is everything that you need him to be. Amen. Look at what Hebrews said. Paul said this in Hebrews 11. He said without faith it is impossible to please him because he that cometh to God must believe what? That he is. That he is what? He's everything you need him to be. Whatever situation that you are in right now, Jesus is everything that you need him to be. And you see, my friend, when Jesus is the shield and he is the door, that means I am standing behind what Jesus has already done. And Listen, you don't need to believe God for provision. You simply need to believe that Jesus is your provision. You don't need to believe God for deliverance. You simply need to believe that Jesus is your deliverance. You don't need to even believe God for healing. You simply believe that Jesus is your healing. You see, my friend, we're searching and seeking after all the wrong things. Instead of seeking after an answer, we should be seeking Jesus because the closer you get to Jesus, the closer you're going to get to your answer. Amen. That little, I'm going to mess your theology up because let me tell you, especially in the charismatic and the word of faith realm, I think some people have more faith in their faith than they do in Jesus. Some people have more faith in their words than they do in Jesus. Amen. This woman in Mark chapter 5, 12 years, the Bible said, she had an issue of blood. She'd spent every dime that she had on doctors and, and, and different diagnoses. And she finally came to the point where she said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, I would be made whole. And the Bible said that as soon as she pressed through the crowd, Jesus didn't even address her. Jesus didn't bring her to the front. Jesus didn't make a big demonstration. All she did was touch him and virtue went out of his body and flowed into the body of this woman and immediately the virtue of healing healed her. Let me tell you something church, you just simply need today to get everything else out of your head and start saying Jesus I'm going to seek you and you alone I'm going to stop seeking my answer and I'm going to start seeking Jesus and when you touch him your answer is going to come somebody shout amen My God, all I need is Jesus today. I said, all I need is Him today. Don't make it harder than what it is. Jesus said, seek ye first. Everybody say the word first. First, the kingdom of God. And then he said, all of these other things will be added unto you. I think the Lord is waiting for us to get all of our little preconceived ideas out of the way and get serious about seeking him and putting him first. Because when you put Jesus first, under him comes the answer to your need. Under him comes, amen, is the deliverance that you are looking for. Because in him is the answer. Jesus is my faith. Somebody shout amen. Because after that, he said, after you understand of who he is, he said, then you will see that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Paul said, you got to just simply take up the shield. You got to stay covered. Stay behind Jesus. I'm just going to say this right now. The reason I think we get messed up is because we're trying to get ahead of him Instead of staying behind him. I'm going to say it again. We get messed up because we try to get ahead of him and staying behind him. 
We get ahead of him by putting our own ideas and plans together. We get ahead of him by trying to reason out how God is going to move. Right now, somebody, I feel the Holy Ghost telling me, somebody is getting ahead of God because you are putting your own ideology into what you think God is going to do. Can I tell you, God doesn't care what I think. He doesn't care what you think. His ways are so much higher than my ways. You've got to stay behind Jesus. Let him be your guide. Let him be your shield. Let him be your light and no matter what he is going to lead you into the victory because it's all about him amen that's what faith is which leads me then to the second the second aspect is not just the definition but I want you to see secondly the defense of faith the reason we stay behind him is because With that, you will be able, in our text, to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, when Paul writes about the fiery darts, he's writing about the most advanced weapons in his day. Literally, these armies had arrows and spears that had tips with combustible material. And what they would do, they would light it on fire, shoot or throw these into the enemy forces. Now, this is before gunpowder. This is before you could go to the shooting range and shoot. And so this was a very technologically advanced means of warfare. And so during an an assault, There was a constant barrage of these fiery darts that would be coming from every different direction. That's why you couldn't use this little shield that was in front of you because you never knew from which direction the next dart, the next arrow, the next spear would come. He had to hide behind that door. He had to hide behind that shield. And it's for that reason that Paul said you've got to put in front of you the shield of faith. Because listen to me, church, you never know where the next attack of the enemy is going to come from. I said, how many know that you cannot plan on when the devil's going to attack you? You can't put it in your day planner at 4.30 p.m. on Wednesday. I better be ready because the devil's going to attack. He may attack you at 4.30 a.m. on Tuesday. In the middle of the night, you might wake up and the devil is right there with all kinds of seeds of doubt and fear. You never know. when. The, that's why you got to stay behind Jesus. Because if Jesus is your door, the devil's got to get through Jesus to get to you. I said the devil's got to get through Jesus to get to you. Amen. The, the, the number one thing the devil is after is he is after your faith. I've heard people say, devil's after my marriage. Devil's after my husband. Devil's after my job. The devil's after my house. Let me tell you, the devil is not after your husband. There's times you don't even want your husband. What's the devil going to do with your husband? Huh? You know I'm right. The devil is not after your house. What's he going to do with your house? He's not after your job. The devil is after your faith. And he is using your husband, he is using your job, and he's using your house to get to your faith. Listen now, because the devil knows that if you, in the midst of marital discord, will lose your trust in God, that you have removed yourself out from the shield of faith, and now you are vulnerable on the battlefield. And that is when he is going to launch his vicious attack to destroy your life. Let me tell you something, friend. It is not going to be the divorce that destroys you. It is going to be when you stop trusting. Trusting God in the middle of the divorce. It is not losing your job that is going to destroy you. It is when you stop trusting God after you've lost your job. It is not going to be the depression that destroys you. It is going to be when you say, God, why am I going through this? And you stop trusting Him. Can I tell you? You can have faith in the middle of a divorce. How how many believe that? You can have faith even when you lose your job. You can have faith 
when your body is afflicted. You can have faith when everything is crumbling around you. And as long as you've got faith, serve the papers, take my job away from me, lose my mortgage, but I've got Jesus. And if I've got Jesus, then I've got faith. Somebody shout amen. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord is saying, get up in the middle of your battle and do not lose faith because God has not changed. Your spouse may have walked out on you, but God has not changed. You might have got a pink slip, but black and white, red and white, Jesus' word is still the same. You don't need to look at your situation. You need to keep the faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Touch somebody, say, keep the faith. Keep the faith. I said, keep the faith. Because right now, God, the devil's got you convinced that if you really love God and God really loved you, you would not be going through what you're going through. But the devil is a liar because Job said, even though he slays me, yet will I trust him. I said, yet will I trust him. I said, yet will I trust him? My God, there's some faith. Amen. Men and women of God that are going to stand in the midst of losing everything, but you're still going to trust God. Hallelujah. Brother, when you got it as bad as Job, you come and see me. I guarantee I will buy you dinner. When you've got it as bad as Job where you lost it all and you're scraping boils and you've got a spouse that's saying curse God and die. But in the midst of it all, Job said, he said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job said, I came into this world naked and I'm going to go out of this world naked. Which means my spirituality does not depend upon how much money is in my bank account. It does not depend upon how many square feet my house is. It does not depend upon the size of car that I drive or don't drive. I came into this world naked and I'm going to go out of this world naked naked. I'm not taking my Cadillac with me. I'm not taking my house with me. I'm not taking my job with me. I'm entering into eternity with nothing but Jesus and Jesus alone. He said, naked I came in. Naked I'm going out. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many believe God is still God? Somebody shout amen. <laughs> Woo! He has never changed. And he's not about to change. I said he is not about to change. Amen. But the devil's got you convinced. That God has walked out on you. The devil's got you convinced. That because you're being assaulted by the enemy. In some way your faith. Amen. Let me tell you. Your faith is not strong when everything's going good. Everything's going good. Let's be honest. We don't need a whole lot of faith. Huh? I said, we don't need a whole lot of faith. Paycheck is good. Marriage is good. Mortgage is paid. My, my, my car is paid. I got, I got plenty of food on my table. I'm able to go to men's warehouse, buy a suit every now and again. Got a little extra income to take the vacation. All I got to do is show up to church. Everything's good. But brother, it's when the paycheck doesn't come. That's when you need the faith to say, God, I'm not dip Oh, my God. <laughs> ah, yeah. It's when I don't have the money to buy the suit. And I say, Lord, I still believe that you're my Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. It's when the doctor said there's nothing he can do that I still say, you are Jehovah Rapha. You are the Lord, my healer. It's when everybody else is backslid. And you say, ha, ha, Lord, you're my righteousness. I'm not dependent on my God. You ought to hear what I'm saying right now. Church, I'm telling you, we got to get out of this realm of saying that faith is believing in things. Faith is the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the last time I checked, he is still the same today. And he's always been and will be throughout all of eternity. Hallelujah. You see, I got to move on. These fiery darts... 
Some of you are feeling it right now. You're feeling it right now. These fiery darts, the only way that my faith is going to stand against them is this third point here. Because of the decisions that I make. There's two decisions every day that a soldier had to make. He would get up in the morning. He would grab his shield. With the other hand, he would grab a vial or flask of oil. You say, Pastor, why would he grab oil? Because you see, when you really study the history of this, the shields that these men had were actually made of animal hide. They were very thick, six layers thick of animal hide. And so what the soldier had to do is he would take this oil and he would dump this oil onto a cloth and he would take that oil and rub it into the leather part of his shield. He would rub that oil in. I want you to hear, I want you just to hang with me for a second. He would rub that oil in into the leather part of that shield so that the leather part of the shield remained soft and pliable. If that oil was not put in every single day, then the armor, then the shield would become brittle. It would become dry. And then when he got into battle, it would begin to crack. And so he rubbed the oil in to the armor every single day. Now, if you look in the scripture, oil represents the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every time a king would ascend to the throne, amen, what the priest would do is take the flask of oil and he would dump it over the head of the king. And it was the oil that separated and sanctified him and said, this man is qualified and he is favored of God. Come on, somebody. How many want to be favored of God? Let me hear you shout amen. How many want to be qualified in the kingdom of God? Let me hear you shout amen. Amen. It was the oil that said, hey, you need to be, it's this oil that sets him apart. Every time that a priest would enter into the office of the priesthood, he would be anointed with the oil, and it wasn't just a little dab of do you one little finger, no, they poured it over his head, and it ran down his beard, and it touched all of the clothing of the priest. Why do I tell you this? I tell you that the only thing that is going to keep your faith from breaking and becoming brittle in the time of battle is the anointing oil that comes from the Holy Ghost, because you see, my friend, the Bible said in Revelation chapter 5, every single child of the king has been made a king and a priest unto God. Come on, somebody. How many are a king today? Let me hear you shout amen. I said, I'm a cold. My God, that's what the word said, not me. How many are a king today? Let me hear you shout amen. The only thing that is going to set you apart to ascend into that royal priesthood is the anointing oil of the Holy Ghost. What am I saying, church? You want your faith to be strong? You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. I said, you need, oh my God, you didn't hear what I said. You need to be full of the Holy Ghost. You need to be full of the anointing that only comes from the third person of the Trinity Church. We need the Holy Ghost more now than we have ever needed Him in the history of the world. Amen. Look at what Jude said. He said, you beloved, building up your what? Your most holy faith. He said, building up yourselves on your most holy faith. How did he say do it? He said, praying in the Holy Ghost. Brother, I'm going to tell you something. And you may not, whether you agree with me or not, I'm just going to tell you. Amen. I believe that the power of the Holy Ghost, amen, wants to visit you every single day when you get in your prayer closet. Amen. You need to pray until you are anointed and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Church, I am, I am just done with little cutesy prayers where we recite it and we go through the motions. I believe, church, it is time for us to get into the realm of the Holy Ghost where we pray until the anointing come. Do you know what I'm talking about? I said pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray Pray in a heavenly language. Pray until the anointing comes out. That's going to make your face strong so that when you go into the world, you're anointed by God and you are set apart by the Holy Ghost. Amen. How many know what I'm talking about? Not only would he rub the oil in, after he rubbed the oil in, 
this soldier made a second decision. He would take water. He would soak the shield with water. And the reason he would soak the shield with water is because he knew that in just a few moments, some fiery darts were going to come at him. And that's why, look at what Paul said. Go back to the word. He said, that's why it is the shield that will do what? Quench. Everybody say the word quench. It is the shield that would quench. The word quench literally means to extinguish. So as soon as that fiery dart would hit the shield, immediately upon, immediately upon impact, it would be quenched. It would be extinguished because the shield had been soaked in water. And it was the water that quenched the fiery dart of the enemy. Now, if you know your Bible, amen, water is always equated to the Word of God. Amen. The Bible says in Ephesians that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the Word. You see, my friend, amen, when you walk out and your faith has been drenched in the Holy Ghost and your faith has been drenched in the water of the Word of God, when the devil comes at you with a fiery dart, I believe immediately, if you are so full of the Word, immediately that dart is going to be quenched and it is going to be put out. Amen. Not because you did some song and dance. It's because you are so full of the Word of God that the devil can't come at you with any lie of the enemy because the truth of the word of God lives in come on somebody I'm telling you church I need the word of God in a way like I have never needed him before because the devil is out lying to you and telling you all kinds of junk and the only way to combat the lies of the devil is with the truth of the word of God because he cannot stand the truth he's got a tuck tail and run because it is the word of God that quenches every dart that the enemy is throwing at you listen church Get full of the word and the dart is going to go and the fire is going to be quenched and you're going to stand victorious because of the Holy Ghost and because of the word. Somebody shout amen. amen. Devil comes at you and says God's given up on you. You can come back with the word and you can say I am confident of this very thing. That he which hath begun a good work in me is going to perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. The devil's going to come at you and say you can't pay your mortgage. You are going to lose your house and you're going to be on the side of the street. And you can come back with the word and you can say I have been young and I have been old. But I have never seen the righteous forsaken. I have never seen his seed begging bread. What am I saying church? I believe you need to get out and you need to start quoting the word of God over yourself every single day. Amen. Stop talking about how bad things are and begin to quote the word. You need to prophesy over yourself because when you prophesy and it's according to the word of God, it will come to pass because God, oh my God, I'm about to shout right now because God is not a liar. He is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. What comes out of your mouth needs to be truth. It needs to be based on this book right here and not not the opinions that you have deep inside of you. Speak the word and let the word quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Amen. Let that soak in right now. I said let the water soak into your faith right now. Let the oil soak into your faith right now. Say, Pastor, my faith is weak. I'm praying the Holy Ghost arrests you and so fills you with the power of the highest that you will no longer say, my faith is weak. You say, Pastor, I can't believe God anymore. I'm telling you, amen, get into the Word and begin to see what God has said and who God is. And suddenly you're going to start to see the fiery darts quenched. The moment they make impact with your faith, it's going to be gone because of what the Word said. They say the word prophesy. Say it again, prophesy. You say, Pastor, I'm not a prophet. You don't need to be a prophet to prophesy. 
Prophecy simply means to utter forth, to speak forth. Amen. Church, listen to me. Amen. We talk about everything. We talk about the weather. We talk about politics. We talk about jobs. And brother, when you live in northern Indiana, the weather gives you a whole lot to talk about. Coming out of the political season we just came out of, politics gives you a whole lot to talk about. But you see, how about we just shut up about the weather and shut up about politics and start talking about the Word of God? Because when you begin to prophesy, all you're doing is speaking forth that which God has already said. And brother, it's going to change the atmosphere of your life. Do you hear what I'm saying? I'm saying get your face so wet with the water. Get your face so wet with the oil at the anointing of the Word. My God, to takes over and you are able to stand in the midst of the battle how many believe it shout amen I said how many believe it shout amen come on stand to your feet right now all across this building father in the name of Jesus Lord I thank you for the faith the faith in who you are God I'm hiding behind you today I am hiding behind you today in the name of Jesus, I rebuke every, every lie of the devil right now. In Jesus' name, I rebuke it. I command it to go. And I stand, Lord, on what you have said. I stand on what you have declared. I stand, Lord, in the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I stand in the water of the Word. Lord Jesus, oh my God. Lord, somebody here needs, needs their faith, needs their faith to go before them. In the name of Jesus, right now. Right now, do something, Lord. Do something that I cannot. Amen. I'm just going to right now, heads bowed, eyes closed. I'm not even going to ask you to raise your hand. But you are in the fight of your life right now. In your life, you are in the fight of your life. And you have felt the attack of the enemy in areas of your life. And you've tried to seek, you've tried to search, you've tried to ask. And the enemy just keeps assaulting. And you need your faith to go before you right now. Step out of your seat. I'm asking you, you're, you're desperate. You're saying, God, I need my faith anointed by the oil. I need my faith anointed by the oil. Amen. Come on, step out. I rebuke every attack right now. Come on, come on, come on. Don't even hesitate. Don't even hesitate five seconds. You are in the fight of your life right now. And you need hands laid on you. And you need God to come. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Amen. The Holy Ghost is here. Amen. The Holy Ghost <laughs> said the Holy Ghost is here. Our altar workers are standing behind you. Our ushers are standing behind you. Amen. Our church is going to pray with you. I'm going to lay hands on you. And we're going to stand. We're going to stand. Stand behind the shield of faith. Stand back. Come on, come on, come on. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Amen. Just all the way across the front. All the way across the front. Hallelujah. Just press in, press in, press in as close as you possibly can. Hallelujah. Amen. How many believe God's going to touch somebody? Come on, raise your hand in agreement. Amen. I want you to begin to pray. Begin to pray right now. Amen. Come on, sing. Glory to God. Hope Hallelujah. Is built on nothing less. Ah, yes. In Jesus' blood. Begin to lift up your hands right now. I dare not trust the sweetest friend, my God, my God. but only lean on Jesus' name.
Trust in His righteousness alone Faultless to stand before the hide behind Jesus this week don't get in front of him 
just feel like telling you that again. Do not try to get in front of him. How many know sometimes we get in a hurry? Come on, raise your hand. We try to make something happen, especially when you're in the middle of a battle. Don't try to make it happen. Jesus has already got it taken care of. Just hide behind him today. How many love him? Just give him one more hand clap of praise in this place right now. Amen. How many feel like he has strengthened your faith today by the power of the Holy Ghost? By the power of his word, you're strong. Wednesday night, special night, want you to come. Chili supper at 6.30. The Genetians have a drama about the woman that was taken in adultery. Jesus said, go and sin no more. It's a powerful message. Going to have a great time of fellowship. Join us next Sunday. Continue our series. How many are ready to take on the world today and win by the grace of God? Let me hear you shout amen. God bless you, Brother Gary. Come on. Amen. Lead us in prayer as we go. Let's go in faith in who God is. Amen. How many got their shields of faith all wet with the word of God this morning? How many are ready to go out and conquer for King Jesus? You ready to go? Hallelujah. Just a couple quick things before we pray a prayer of dismissal. We've got these red buckets up here. If you happen to come late, this is for your tithes and your offering. Get your seed in the ground. Hallelujah. Plant that seed and you'll get a harvest back. Praise the Lord. Also want to let you know that if you receive the bulletin, if you are a first-time visitor with us this morning, you fill out the backside of that bulletin and you go out here to uh, see Pastor John and his lovely wife, Sonia, and you'll get a free coffee cup of chocolates. And not only that, but your church will send a copy of the Word of God through the Spread the Word ministry to somebody in the, in the world just for being a first-time visitor. We will send one Bible for every visitor, so go and see them back there. I don't know where the coffee cup is with the chocolates. I didn't eat them, I, I promise you. Do you love the Lord? Finally, before we pray, one more thing. We have altar workers every service that are right up here in front. If something's not quite right, if you'd like the prayer of agreement with somebody, come up to these trained altar workers. They are anointed of the Holy Spirit. How many know prayer changes things? Jesus said, when just two of me gather in my name, just two or three, there I am in the midst. Hallelujah. We've seen people saved. We've seen people filled with the Holy Spirit. We've seen healings right here after service. So don't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's pray, everybody. Father God, we just thank you for the way that your spirit has moved upon us. God, the refreshing that comes from being in your presence, God. We thank you, Father, that you watch over your word to perform it. And the word of God went forth powerfully, Father. Lord, we thank you that it's faith that pleases you, God. And Lord, we are a faith people. And we have the faith of God residing on the inside of us. It's not about us. It's all about you, Jesus. And Lord, we thank you, God, that as we go forth in the highways and the byways, we will be your witnesses to the people we work with, to the people that that we come in contact with today and every day this week, Father. And we will share this faith with others. We will share the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we thank you. I ask you to bless each and every person here. Bless their homes. Remove sickness from them, God. Lord, remove sickness. God, I ask that you bless your people, Father God, in a wonderful, wonderful way this week. And Father, we will be very careful to give you all the praise and glory and honor for everything that you've done in our midst today and for what you're getting ready to do for all of us this week. In Jesus' name we pray. And somebody in agreement said, Amen. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap of praise. Love somebody. You may go in peace. God bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night.